What is going on guys, it's Bucky and welcome to your 7th chemistry tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking about the atom and I'm not talking about your dumb friend atom, I'm talking about this little thing here right here. You know those balls I was talking about earlier? Ugh, not those balls, come on guys, focus! Those balls that I said everything in the universe, all the matter is made out of these tiny little things called atoms, well that's what this thing is right over here. Now if you're taking a chemistry class in high school or college, you have to define an atom as this, the smallest part of matter that represents a particular element. That's a scientific term, but I'm just going to call them tiny balls that everything in the universe is made up of. So for a while, for a long time in history, people used to think that these were the smallest possible things that could ever exist. And if you're wondering how small an atom is, think of this. Picture a hair, like a hair from your head or your arm or, you know, wherever you want to get it. And think how thin a piece of hair is. The width of a hair is like almost invisible, really. And how big is atom compared to that width of a hair? You can fit one million atoms, roughly, depending on how thick your hair is, through the width of a hair. So if you took a hair and sliced it up a million times, that would be about how wide an atom is pretty crazy if you think about it huh so anyways that's why people thought for a while that atoms were the smallest possible thing that could ever exist but then the scientists got all these fancy instruments and did all these fancy tests and they figured hey there's actually stuff that makes up an atom you can split this atom into three smaller things and technically an atom is made up of more than three things but for the scope of beginner chemistry we're going to be talking about the three main ingredients and I just needed to say that or else people would yell at me and be like, oh, what about quarks and positrons and all that stuff? But we'll worry about that later. So anyways, what's in an atom? Three things, protons, neutrons, and electrons. Sounds fancy enough. Let's go ahead and learn some more about those. So protons are the first ingredient. They're something that's very dense. And by dense, I mean they're pretty much very heavy. And they have a positive charge. And just remember, opposites attract. In chemistry, that's one rule you have to remember. Opposites attract. Positive is attracted to negative. So positives are... Po oh, my... Gee, I can't talk. Protons are very heavy and dense, and they have a positive charge. Neutrons are another ingredient. They are heavy just like protons, however they don't have any charge at all. So if you could look at a proton, a neutron, they would probably look the same. The only difference is a proton has a positive charge. Now electrons have a negative charge and they're also a lot smaller and lighter than protons or neutrons. How small exact? It takes 2,000 electrons to equal the mass of a proton. So pretty much Protons and neutrons are huge and both dense. Protons have a positive charge. Electrons are very small and light, and they have a negative charge. So electrons are attracted to protons, and neutrons are just kind of chilling there, hanging out. So you're saying, okay, so is this like all jumbled up like in a big stew, or how this put together? Well, first, let's go ahead and talk about the nucleus. The nucleus is the center of an atom, and this is really a bad diagram because the nucleus really isn't this big, but for the sake of this tutorial, just imagine that this red thing right here is the nucleus. It's the center. So in the center, or the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons are chilling together. And again, the center of the atom is what we call the nucleus. Don't get neutrons and nucleus mixed up. Neutrons and protons are in the nucleus. Don't forget it or else I'll punch you in the head, dropkick you. So the nucleus is actually very, very small and very dense compared to the entire atom. So that's why I said that this diagram is really way off. And you were saying, okay, so is it like half the size of this diagram or what? Let me go ahead and give you an image. If an atom, this entire atom right here, was the size of a football stadium, the nucleus would be the size of, it would be like a raisin or a grape on the 50 yard line in the middle of it. So that is how small the nucleus is compared to the entire atom. So just imagine that and that is why again that this diagram is way off.
So even though it's really, really incredibly small, it contains 99, even more than 99% of the mass. So it's really small, but it's super dense and super heavy. And I know I didn't talk to you guys about density, and if you don't know what that means by dense, it, it means how much stuff is in something. So, for example, you can have a marshmallow. Oh, never mind. We'll talk about density later. And oh, I'm hungry for marshmallows now. But anyways, we'll talk about all that good stuff later. So just remember for now, in the nucleus, the protons and neutrons are in the middle and very dense. And the electrons are whizzing around outside. But we'll talk about the electrons in the next tutorial. So the last thing I want to cover is this. Whenever you look at a list of different kinds of atoms stuck together, and this list is going to be called the periodic table, which we're going to learn about later, but you're going to see something like this. The first thing you're going to notice is the atomic number. Now, the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. Like, for example, um, hydrogen has one proton, helium has two protons. It's pretty much how you define different elements determining on the number of protons. So determ depending on how many protons the element has, that's what gives it its name. So you're going to see its name, and this one is plutonium, that's what PU is. The atomic number is the number of protons, and the mass number is the number of protons plus neutrons. So we're saying, okay, where is just the number of neutrons? Well, they aren't going to do all the math for you. So if you ever want to figure out how many neutrons are in plutonium, you just take 244, which is the number of protons and neutrons, pretty much everything in the nucleus, minus the number of protons, or atomic number, and you get 150 neutrons in plutonium in this instance. So again, they aren't going to do all the math for you, but you know, if you want to figure it out, you can. So again, one last time, this thing right here is plutonium, and in plutonium there are 94 protons, and that's the atomic number, it changes with each element, and the mass number is the number of protons and number of neutrons, pretty much how much stuff is in the nucleus of the atom. So hopefully you now understand the atom, and you have a better understanding of the universe and what we're made up of. So now that we solve that mystery, we can begin to go on and learn other things. So anyways, thank you guys for watching, and uh, I will see you next time.